Alright you guys, so Tommy Robinson might find himself back in court very soon, but this time, not as the defendant, Tommy Robinson has claimed he's going to take Sky News to court for making a mockery out of an interview, accusing him of being a liar. Basically, they butchered the whole interview. They were cutting, copying and pasting. They were editing his answers and changing and mixing them up with different questions. You know, pure butchering it and uh, false propaganda, just uh, making him out to be a liar. And it looks like he's going to take them to court for that. And I say, well done if that is the case. Thankfully, his cousin, uh, Kevin Carroll, who was also present while the interview was going on, recorded the full thing and therefore he has been able to expose uh, Sky News' lies. Here is the full video. Today's headline that's gone all around the world says that Tommy Robinson says he doesn't care if he, as in me, incites fear against Muslims. A lot of people ask why I sat down with Sky News. I sat down with Sky News to expose them. I knew exactly what they was going to do. They've done it to me for years. But I wanted you, the public, to see that. So I want to now go through exactly what they've said, where this headlines come from. If you read the Sun newspaper, if you read Russia Today, if you look at LBC, all of them said, LBC, that I don't care if my message incites fear against Muslims. If you look at the report that Sky News put out, Jason Terrell puts a voiceover before he shows me answering a question. In the voiceover, he leads the public to believe that he's asked me about my opinions causing fear into Muslims. And then he cuts and edits an answer I give to a completely different question that's completely out of context. So it makes it look like I'm answering the question that he's put in his voiceover. And it has me saying that I don't care if it installs fear so long as it prevents the rape of young children. Villain to some, but glorified outside court today. There's no doubt he's become a public figure, but I put it to him that as with terrorism, his opinions on grooming gangs risks demonising an entire community. Do you know what? Do you know what? I'll, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I don't care if it incites fear so long as it educates the children and prevents them being raped. OK? Do you really There's want to leave this interview in the, with the thought that you're happy to instill fear of a, of a community of, of 3.8 million people if you watch into... every speech I've ever give okay I make it clear that it's not all Muslims I make that very clear every time I talk now when you see in context what I'm talking about what I was actually talking about was an educational video that was in Holland that was put out in schools to educate young girls against the manipulative, sight, the manipulative way that Muslim men in Holland, Moroccan men, were grooming young victims. So it was educational so the children could see the telltale signs. We were talking about a video, not about me or my views, nothing to do with my views, yeah? a video. And I said, I don't care if it incites fear because of the way they've cut and edited it. And then when you look at their headline, all of the headlines, Sky News run the headline. Tommy Robbins says, says I don't care if I incite fear. I didn't say the word I, I said it. I didn't say the word incite, I said incites. They've actually changed two words, took letters off of both words, which completely changed the context of what I said. It makes it look like I'm talking about my views, which I wasn't. You can, you're gonna watch the video in its entirety. I was talking about a video. I was talking about a video. I said, I don't care if it, the video. They've changed the words. They haven't even done a good job in their editing, because if you actually go on YouTube, on their own news report, YouTube, and you go into the transcripts, which you can get the transcript from the, from, from the video, it says, Tom, I don't care if it, I didn't say I, I said it. I'm talking about a video, I'm not talking about me, okay? Now across the whole world today, all of the mainstream media, and if all journalists, everyone with a blue tick, basically, on Twitter, has run the story that Tommy Robinson says he don't care if he, me talking about myself, I've never said that. This is ultimate fake news. And it's gone all around the globe. And I sat down with them to show you this. What they've then done is then he's cut in. He asked me a question. There's, there's more conversation in between. But then Jason asked me and turned around and says, are we going to end this conversation? He's got an earpiece in. They sat with me for one hour and 15 minutes. I knew why. To get sound points. So I had Kevin Carroll, my cousin, secretly record the entirety of our conversation. So now I can show you, in context, everything that happened and everything that was said. And you will see that the headline you've read today 
in every newspaper by all the journalists. They've changed the words and they've completely changed the context. I never once said, I install fear in Muslims and I don't care. I never said that. I was talking about a video, an educational video to prevent rape of young children. So I, what, what you've just seen and what you're about with this, and please, if you're watching this, share it. The public need to realise, and they think you, they think the public are that stupid that they can lie, manipulate and change and put their narrative into any story they want to make you think a certain way about people and their opinions. And this is a perfect example of it. When I walked out of prison, when, I, when Jason Farrell first came up to me, I said, what's the point in speaking to you? All you do is lie. Just completely proved that point. In the hour and 15 minute sit down interview, we were having a conversation about grooming gangs. In every single town and city in this country, young children are being taken as slaves by gangs of Muslim men. Now, if you don't want to draw the correlation to the fact that Islam promotes and allows that, then you don't want to because you're too weak and too much of a coward to do it. But I will do it. I will tell people we need to look at why this is happening and understand and why I'm it's telling you that you're potentially inciting racial hatred. You've been, out, or you've been out on the streets. You, you, you get, you know, faith uh, over, you, over the course of your time as, race, the EDL what, mem what, as an EDL member, you were getting people out on the streets. What race have I mentioned? Getting, who getting what race angry. have I mentioned? You, you, what race have you, I mentioned? You, you've, you've mentioned... Muslims and you mentioned Muslims aren't we've talked race. about you understand me. we've talked about Pakistani men Islam is not a race yeah, yeah but we've talked about so, Pakistani so men, men who, who who believe in Israel right. and this is the so semantics no, no 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 whether you, it's racism or Islamophobia you can't make an accusation it like is that. Semantic. you can't it make an semantic. accusation like that on TV and not back up tell me what I've said that is inciting racial hatred you're, uh, you're, you're suggesting that people of a certain origin are more likely to be rapists or child pedophiles or take slaves if Jason thinks I'm inciting racial hatred by stating facts about Muslims being overrepresented with child rape cases, then maybe he thinks Sajid Javid, our Pakistani Home Secretary, should also be charged. I've already been clear that I will ask difficult questions about the gangs who sexually abuse our children. There will be no no-go areas of inquiry, and I will not let cultural or political sensitivities get in the way of understanding the problem and doing something about it. We know that in these recent high profile cases where people have been convicted, that those people are disproportionately from a Pakistani background. So that's, so that, that, factual. That, 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 that's actually that, factual by the grooming, that, grooming statistics that, and the rest. That, that's inciting racial hatred to you. That you, you are suggesting that there is a group it within society who are more likely to be paedophiles. I've all, you, know, you might say the same about the Catholic Church, for example. Uh, there is, but, actually. But, but, uh, if, but, we, if we look at people but, who run churches, and yeah, there is a higher percentage there chance of the person running... The, there, there's a higher percentage chance that the person running the Catholic Church is going to be a paedophile than the person running a Buddhist church, a Buddhist, mm. or a Sikh temple. There's a, mm. That's a fact, OK? Mm. Now, another fact is that there is a higher percentage chance that it's Muslim men for, for, for street gang grooming. That's but a you're, fact. You're, 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 you're equating it to the, the book that they read. That no, okay, okay. When I sit on TV and I watch Boko Haram, who are a terrorist organisation in Nigeria, when they kidnapped 200 Nigerian women, we all saw the campaign, Free Our Girls, yeah? We saw every political leader holding it. What the leader of Boko Haram said on the camera is, Mohammed has commanded us to do this. That's not me equating it. That's the leader telling us why he's took those girls. Now, he clearly says... We've took those girls because Mohammed commanded us to. If you look at ISIS and all the sex slaves they've taken, they clearly state this is justified under Sharia. That's why we're doing this. Now, what I'm saying is, if we've got sex slaves being taken in every Islamic country in the world, and then we look at the statistics in Britain, and we see that the majority, 90% of these groom grooming convictions, brothers are sharing young children as victims, yeah. cousins, fathers and sons. Okay? Yeah. There's something seriously different within this community that views how this is. There's no outlaw. In fact, at each one of these court trials, all the women and all the, all the families are calling the young girls slacks. But if you're, worried worried about children, this, if you're worried about We started talking about the educational video, which Jason and Sky have manipulated to be the answer to a completely different question. You, you are, do you not accept, making it more difficult for justice to be done? I mean, these guys are going through the justice system. Now, what's your problem? OK, there, there was a, there was a, a video called Loverboy that come out of Holland, which was showing that in Holland it's Moroccans, okay, mm. doing these crimes. In Britain it's Pakistanis, we have majority Pakistanis. If you go to France, it's Algerian. Common denominator in all of them, 
mechanisms. Now, if, if, if you go to Holland, they actually created an a educational video to be shown in schools to warn children about these crimes. When they tried to show that in Britain in 2007, the British establishment would not allow that video to be shown because, like you just go, oh, it would incite racial hatred. So because of people well, it with... it is going to incite. It is going to incite fear to suggest, to suggest that when you also know that there are, like the group in Bristol, white paedophiles, um, there is the, the... Do you know what? Do you know what? I'll, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I don't care if it incites fear so long as it educates the children and prevents them being raped. Okay? Now mm. that fear is a, a genuine, realistic fear okay. that people should have. Uh, you know every parent who lives near a Muslim community who has yeah. a young daughter, that fear is already in them. Okay? Yeah. Because they're already woke, scared. Because they know what's happening. I do you know how many girls I know that I grew up with in Luton who are now wearing burqas or have been abused and sexually abused. So, and raped. What, so, so, so you've told me you're not really interested in language politics. You're not really interested in um, that sort of democratic process. I haven't said but that. You, I didn't say that. Well, you said you didn't want to become an MP. You just wanted to. I said I, I, I said that what I'd love to see is I'd love to see UKIP represent the working class people in this country, and I'd love to see them galvanise and politicise the support and the movement. That's what I'd love to see. Um, but do you really want to leave this into you in the, with the thought that you're happy to instill fear of a, of a community of, of 3.8 million people? If you watch every it. speech I've ever given, okay, I say, in fact, let's go back to my Leeds video, yeah, the one that mm. I went to prison for. Have you watched the video? No, it was taken down. Oh, you've never watched the video? No, it's, it's not been taken. It's live It's not been taken down. It's online now. Okay. okay. So, so you haven't watched the video? No. In that video, I make it clear that there are many young Muslims that I've grown up with who would be as disgusted as me with what's happened to these children, okay? I make it clear that it's not all Muslims. I make that very clear every time I talk, mm. okay? But just because the problem is identified from coming from that community, that, that I'm not gonna stop saying it or stop educating or stop telling the truth about it. Now, what you have seem to have had a problem with so far mm. is truth and facts. You don't like the reality of what the teachings of Islam are. And you have a problem with me identifying. No, I'm just saying. So now you've seen the actual footage in context. You've seen that I never once said, I don't care that I, me personally, incites fear. I never said that. It's a complete and utter lie. You've seen that Sky News in their headline have changed two words to fit their narrative to paint me in a negative picture. You've seen the ultimate fake news. Sky News' job and the media's job is supposed to be report the news. That was supposed to be an interview where you get an in-context conversation about my views. And they've done everything they can to change that and swing it in a negative narrative. That is not journalism, that's propaganda.